Hey, this is Brock Lemirez, and in this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of an array in C. All right, so up until now, we've looked at variables that are called scalars, and that means that when you set up a variable, it can hold one value. Now, the value it can hold can have different types. It can have int, float, car, double, etc. However, it, it, when you set up the name of it, it really holds, it's one location that holds one piece of information. An array is the ability in C to store many, many values using a single name. And the name can access basically the entire kind of group of data except that the values all have to have the same type. So if you consider this down here, this is the syntax for an array in C. You use the square brackets to define it. So in this situation, we would have the name of the array being A, the square brackets tell C, hey, go set up some locations in memory, and then what's inside of the square brackets tells you how many elements in the array. Now, and we also call that the dimension. Now, the data type out here represents the data type of each of the elements that are set up. So what this would do is it would set up four locations in memory that have the data types int at each of them, and then A would represent how you access all of them using a single name. In this situation right here, you would actually set up 32 bits in each location. So this would be four bytes at each of the four locations. So this would actually set up uh, four times four, it would set up 16 bytes of memory. Okay, now here's like a graphical depiction of an array. You're going to have four locations, and then the way that you access individual locations in the array is with what we call an index. The index is always an integer, and it always starts at zero. And so if you look at this graphical depiction of an array, the index for these locations would be 0, 1, 2, 3. So if you have a four four element array the index would go to zero to four minus one and you can extend that to any arbitrarily sized array so if you had a, a n size array the index would go from zero to n minus one if you look at how you actually access them all you do to simply access an individual location is you place the index you're trying to get to inside of the, of the square brackets. So A0 would be this location. A1 would be this location. And while you can do that, this is called uh, indexing an, an array. <clears throat> this is how you can access the information. So you can store information to a specific location or you can read from it, okay? So that's kind of the high level abstract version of it. Let's look at a little bit lower level. Uh, this is now, kind of closer to the memory, closer to what memory looks like. So you're gonna have an address, like a hard-coded, not hard-coded, but an actual address in computer memory. We never really see these addresses. And the reason is that when you launch a program, the operating system assigns unique addresses for your program, and so they're never the same. So we never really know what addresses we're gonna get for the memory that we allocate. However, it's like a big number, right? I mean, these are these are many, many hex characters worth of address. And it's good we don't have to keep track of it because that's a lot of record keeping. But let's take a look at that same kind of four element array that holds an integer. So if I came in and I said, I'm gonna set up an array <laughs> And I'm going to also make an assignment that says x at index 2 is equal to 23. This is what it would look like. You'd have 23 in this index location. But notice that the addresses are all offset by 4. The reason that is is because each of these elements or these locations are 4 bytes long. And so that's why you would see this increment from one up to five and five up to nine and nine up to 13, because this is the physical address in memory. And remember in modern computers, you can have an address assigned to each byte. However, you can also address them uh, 32 bits at a time or 64 bits at a time, meaning you can grab that, that size of information out. So when you look at this, the, the hard-coded physical address increments by four as you walk through this, but the offset it only increments by an integer value of one. And then this is the identifier, which is the name of the array, but this is a lower level de depiction of this. Now, what this really illustrates is, 
It is very nice for C to allow us to access the elements using an integer or an index because keeping track of this would be almost, it would almost be impossible. Like, no, it wouldn't be impossible. It would just be very tedious, okay? So let's go ahead and code this up and look at some of these basic array concepts. So let's create a new folder and file called array underscore basics and test some of this stuff out. So I got a, a shell over here. I'm logged into the CSCI 109 Linux server. I'm going to make a directory called mod 08 underscore code along. And then I'm going to change into mod 08. Go ahead and hit tab to autocomplete. Let me pull this over so you can see. I don't want to line wrap too bad. Uh, let's see. I'm in the directory. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new program file called array underscore basics dot C. <clears throat> and here I am. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into insert mode. I'm in Vim using Vim, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and do my comment header. And I'll say playing with arrays. And now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> let's set up the whole shell of our program. So I'm going to do pound include standard io.h because I'm using the printf function. And now I got my shell for the main. So I'm going to go int main void. And we know what this is now. This is the main function that all C programs have to have. <clears throat> and now I'm ready to go. So let's create an array and we'll do it int a and we'll do a uh, size of four. So what I've done there is I've created an array that's called A. It has four elements and each of the elements are integers. Okay. And so now I'm going to manually initialize this element by element just to get practice with it. So I'm going to say A square bracket zero. And that means go to the first element in the array, the first location, and go ahead and put in a number. So I just initialize that. Okay. And then let's go to the next element in the array and put in another number and then let's put go to the next element in the array and put in another element and then we'll go to the last element in the array and put in an element okay so kind of silly we're gonna learn how to do this faster but for now i just want to show how to do it so now let's print these things so let's go print f and we'll go a at zero equals and then i'll do format specifier percent d meaning that put in this value an integer and format it with decimal and then I'll go return and then I'll say done. And then I actually access the value held in that location by putting a square bracket zero. And notice how the zero turns uh, blue indicating that it's like, okay, I see that this is something unique. I'm going to do this four times, but I'm going to copy and paste this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape to go into normal mode and I'm going to say Y, Y, which means I just yank this line. And now when I press the P button, it will paste, 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 or said another way, put, put, put. And now I can come in here and I can edit this kind of in a column format. So now I'm going to go, <clears throat> let me update that. And then over here, I'll do, uh, do the same thing here. Delete. Let me delete, delete, and then uh, two, three, and I got it. Okay, so that's my, I've done it. Okay, so now let's check and let's compile this and run it. Okay, so here I am. I'm in my home directory. I'm going to change into mod 08. I take a look at what's in here. I got my source code, array basics. Now I'm going to do GCC, array basics. And I know this line wrap is so annoying, but let's just do this. Try to get it down here. Okay, <laughs> so let me start over here. Uh, Control CCC, uh, clear. All right, here's what I do. GCC, array basics. I go ahead and hit tab to autocomplete. Direct the output into an object file called array basics. I can autocomplete since it's the first time. Delete that. I go ahead and hit it. Looks like it worked. Now let's do it with wall on. Make sure there's no warnings. Okay, now I take a look what's in there. I've got array basics. Let's run this. So I go Sunny Holland, array basics. That means dash dot forward means look in this folder for the executable as opposed to in the Linux path. So I go ahead and hit go and lo and behold, it did it. <laughs> okay, so pretty simple, right? No big deal, but this is pretty awesome because we were able to define four locations in memory. All right, loops, you can see loops coming, right? <clears throat> I mean, this is this loop, looping structure is made for arrays, looping the for loop. So watch what I do now. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create a loop variable called i. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna print, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, okay? The exact same thing, I'm gonna print these four out, but I'm gonna do it with a for loop, okay? So watch how I can do this. The reason for loops are so powerful with arrays is because the loop variable is an integer and I can use that 
as the index for each array. So check this out. I go four and then I say initialization argument i equals zero. So I will start at zero and then my Boolean expression is going to be continue to loop as long as i is less than four. Now I had to know how long how big the array was and then my incrementing or my loop variable alteration argument is i plus plus and that says each time you complete the loop come on back and go ahead and increment that fella. <clears throat> okay, so let's now I got my for loop set up. And all I'm gonna do here is watch. I go print f and I'm gonna say same thing. I go a at and now I'm gonna actually put the index of the array by substituting in the loop variable i. So watch this. I'm gonna print percent d, and that means in that location, didn't turn green, a percent d <clears throat> I'm going to put in the value held in i and then I say equals and then I'm going to do percent d format specifier and there I'm going to put the value of the array and it's like okay that's interesting now how are you going to do the variables in this printf watch this i will be substituted into that format specifier and then a of i will be for substituted into that format specifier. So check it out. I'm using I in all these locations in order to access each array. Okay, so I gotta come up here and I gotta clean this little fella up. So I got I equals, I didn't put a semicolon after I there. Okay, uh, got the caps lock on, boom. All right, so now I'm ready to roll. Check this out. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna do uh, GCC and then I'm going to run it. And lo and behold, it worked. <laughs> uh, yes all right awesomeness okay now let's go back and let's think about initializing arrays because this was kind of silly okay this this was like very manual so c gives us the ability to initialize arrays using curly brackets so let me set up a new array called b and we'll we'll make it four elements again and then i can actually say curly bracket and I can list out the values I want comma delimited. So if I go 2, 22, 222, two, 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 and 333 three, three, and I said go, I now am in a position where I have initialized all four elements in order, index 0, 1, 2, 3, using curly brackets. And this is really a good thing because it was very quick and very easy. And now I'm ready to, let's print this thing. I am going to basically use this for loop right here uh, and I'm gonna use the same loop variable. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say four, i equals zero, i less than four, i plus plus, open curly, and now I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna yy this, and then hit the p button to paste it, and boom, I change that to b, still replace the i as the loop variable in my printf, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and now I'm gonna jump to the end, close my curlies, and there I am. Okay, so here we are, that's the loop variable I works through the B array. Now let's check out what happens here. Let me clear this up. I go GCC, life is good, and now I'm gonna run it. So I arrow through my command history, and lo and behold, check this out. Two, 22, two, 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 three, two, three. That is pretty sweet, all right? So life is good. All right, so we did it, you know, we initialized that. And now this is really an interesting concept here. If you, come up here and let's say that I made this like eight, okay? So I have made an array that has eight elements in it, but I only initialized four in my curly brackets. What C does is it says, you are going to use these as the first four elements. So index zero, one, two, three, and it will initialize the rest with a zero, okay? So if I come down here, let me save this and watch what happens here. I'm just gonna edit my for loop to now assume there's eight elements, and this will actually print uh, all eight. So I'll go ahead and compile it, and I run it, and look at what happened. Two, 22, two, 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 three, two, three, zero, 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 zero. So it initialized it. This is very powerful because it does initialize it as opposed to not having it initialized which is always a bad thing so using the curly brackets is a really good way to actually initialize things and a lot of times what you can do is you can actually just have open curly close curly so if i did this if i just said that watch what happens here i pile that i run it now it's initialized to zeros so 
whenever you do a raise, it's always a good thing to say, like, let's make sure something is in there that we know. And so using the curly brackets is the way you can do it. Now, you can also use uh, like a variable as the dimension of it. Uh, usually what you'll do is you'll do like a pound to find macro to do this, uh, because one of the tricks of this is if I came down here and I was like, all right, I'm going to set up a variable to, to be the dimension. So let's say we did dim is 10 and then we did int. Uh, let's create a new variable or a new array called uh, C and we'll define it. One of the thing about it is that, okay, that works fine, but I can't initialize this to anything. So if I try to initialize it to zero, it errors out because it's like, wait a minute, wait, I don't even know. We're trying to set up all these variables at the same time. So C's like, I'm gonna set up this at the same time I'm setting up your array. So it doesn't like know the answer yet, but this does work very well when we do uh, pound defined macros and we'll be covering a ton of that in, ne in the next videos. But this is just another way that you could use kind of a, some sort of variable to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'll just go ahead and print that and show that this works because I'm sure you don't believe me. <laughs> and so let me do this. I'm going to come over here and uh, now what I'm going to do is come up here and instead of this, I'm going to use dim. And this is cool because then this scales. Uh, and this is this becomes really powerful when we do uh, arrays that hold like time series, which we'll cover in a later video. But if I do this, uh, th nothing's initialized in this, but that's actually good too, because check this out. If I do this, uh, B may be uninitialized. It's like, yeah, I know it is. Uh, let's go ahead and run this. Look at what C is. C is uninitialized. Right. I mean, it's like, look at these values that are in here. It's like totally rando. So this illustrates that you should always initialize everything. OK, and you can do initializations if you use don't use a variable for the dimension, but you do use a pound to find. So we'll do that. Uh, OK, so now to the size of an array. If you wanted to find the number of elements in an array, so let's say you had C, you couldn't do it directly because C doesn't have that function. It doesn't have like giving the number of elements in an array function, but it does have two. Uh, it does have a function called size of that's really interesting uh, that you can use to figure out what's going on. So if I said size of C, it would give me the total size of the number of bytes in the entire array. OK, now that's interesting. That's cool. But it isn't what I want in terms of the number of elements. Right. So, for example, if these were integers, I'd have 10 locations that each had four bytes in it. That would be 40 bytes. And you might want to know that. But what if I want to know, like, what is the integer value of the number of elements? What you could do is simply just take this total size of memory, which would be 40, divide it by the size of one element and that will give you the number of elements. So for example, this has 40 bytes of memory reserve because there's four bytes for each integer times 10. And the size of just one of the elements, if you did C0, it would return four. So that gives you 40 minus, divided by four, which is 10, okay? So let's take a look at that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna come up here and we'll do, we'll create, let's just do this. Let's do it down here. I'll go, uh, int c size okay and i'm going to do this i'm going to go print f uh the size of c is and then i'm going to do a format specifier d and i'm going to say uh give me size of c okay so let's go ahead and print that little guy so then i got one more of those okay all right so let's go ahead and do that so I GCC that. It's got all sorts of warnings in here because we're not using B, but that's fine. Let's run it. Uh, and you say size of C is 40. Okay, so that's what that returned right there. And it's like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Now watch this. I'm going to YY and then I hit P. And then I'm going to say the size of C0 is, and over here I'm going to say, watch this. I'm going to go, go ahead and give me the size of element C0. So I compile that. I know I got warnings, but let's nuke that. Look at that, that's four. And then all I'm gonna do is my simple uh, division, C size equals, and I can just do size of C divided by size of C element zero. It can be any element, but let's use that one. And then let's do this. Then I can just say print F that means C has percent D format specifier elements. And then I can just say line return and then I'm gonna print in there C size. Check this out, that should return 10. So I run it, oh, that wasn't right. 
I go ahead and run it and look at it. It says the size of the entire array took 40 bytes. The size of one element is four. I divided them. That means it has 10 elements. So this is just a little trick to if you ever have an array and you're like, I need to know how many quickly, how many elements are in there. Uh, I can do that. And that becomes powerful if you want to start switching between like all of a sudden you said, I have, I'm going to go from int to long int or to a double. And then that becomes kind of a, an interesting thing too. Okay, another thing you can do is you can actually fill an array from the command line. And so in this situation, you basically put uh, scan f inside of a loop and you allow the user to just keep plunking in values until the array is full. So let's fill up an array from the command line and then we'll print it back out. So let's call it a sample with we'll five elements. We'll put a type float in it and then we'll just read it in and then we will return it all, okay? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Come down here. Uh, what I'm going to do, give myself a little space. I'm going to say new array called sample, have five elements. Each element is of a type float. And I'm going to go ahead and say loop variable i equals zero, i is less than five, and then i plus plus. And then what I'm going to do is open the curly and say printf, and I'm going to prompt the user, enter value number and then i'll go ahead and, and put pound d and i'll put the index of the loop variable right there and then i'll go ahead and say uh and just to make it more readable let's do i plus one so this is just gonna all it's gonna do is print instead of going enter value zero one two three four let's go enter value number one two three four five just it's just a little bit readable we still index the the array using the other one uh using zero start starting at zero okay so i'm gonna come in here and i'm gonna go scan f and then i'm gonna do a float but i'm gonna put a space in front of it because a lot of times with scanf, the second sample, when you hit return, the return will be read in using scanf on the subsequent uh, read. And so we'll go ahead and do uh, percent float for the format specifier to read it in as a floating point. And then we'll go ahead and store it at the address of sample at i. Okay. So then we'll save that up and that's going to loop through. And then I'll have another loop that is exactly the same let me uh i'm gonna y y this and i'll paste it down here and i'm just gonna say right here i'm gonna go hey thanks for entering all that stuff print f and say you entered and then i'll go format specifier percent uh f but with two uh float two decimal places and i'll go ahead and say thanks all right you entered blank and then let's do a line return and then what i'll print out is sample at i so this will read in five things and then it will print out the five things and that'll be cool. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and GCC this thing and let's go ahead and run it. And here we go. Enter value number one. So I'm going to go all right, 3.2, 4.5, 7, 99, 109.109 and boom, it read them all in and actually printed them all back to me. So once again, pretty cool. <laughs> and then kind of the final thing that I want to mention is that if you don't provide the actual uh, dimension in here, but you do initialize it, see, the compiler will count the number of elements in here and automatically create the array of that size. So in this example, if I said D and I left this blank, and I provided one, two, three, four elements in the initialization within the curly brackets, it would put this as, it would create this as a four element array, all of type, holding type floats, okay? All right, that is it. That is an overview of arrays and see ya.